I listen for the starting gun to go off because I'm in a race and I need to know when to start. The gun goes off so I know when to take off. Because if I'm not listening, they're going to get a head start on me. When the gun goes off, the other racers are racing. And I'm like yapping it up, talking it up, ignoring it, not paying attention. And pow! Did, did the gun just go off? What happened? Am I, am I supposed to start moving? Oh, they were going! And I lose my race because I wasn't paying attention when I was supposed to start. But quietly, I can understand when I'm supposed to start. Quietly, I can know which side of the boat I'm supposed to throw the net on to catch the fish that Jesus wants me to catch. Because I can be fishing all night long. Catch nothing. And Jesus is shouting from the shore, Throw the net on the other side! Throw the net on the other side! And if I don't know his voice, I'm going to go, Who's the crazy idiot telling me to throw a net on the other side? I've been fishing off this boat all night long. How stupid is that? If I don't know it's him, if I don't know his voice, if I don't know who he is, when he does speak to me, throw the net on the other side. And that pizza's doing weird stuff tonight, man. It's telling me to go. I just threw it over there a hundred times. Threw it over here a hundred times. We caught nothing. Now he wants me to throw it over there again? That had to be the pizza. That couldn't have been my Lord. But quietly, I know his voice. And when I throw it on their side, what happens? The net starts to break because I caught so many fish and I got to call y'all in to help me fish. Because I quietly listened. That's powerful. When we read the stories like that, do we think of that? Do we put ourselves in the situation? Are you in the boat? And he goes, Mary, walk to me on the water. No, 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 no. Don't call me Jesus. And Peter started walking on the water. Until when? He started looking at the circumstances. So when we're praying to a faithful God that wants to change us or our circumstances, what are we looking at? Are we looking at our circumstances and making the mountain bigger than our God? Or are we looking at our God that says, my foot's on the top of this mountain. I squash it anytime I want. I just kick it and it's going to the ocean. Faithful. But if we're not quiet, if we don't have quiet times with God, how do we ever hear Him when He tells us anything? If we're not listening when pastor's given a sermon on Sunday morning, how are we ever getting what God wants to get? Well, first of all, we got to be like the expectantly waiting for Him. I... I when I come to church on Sunday, I'm expectantly waiting for God to say something to me through me when I watch this in four or five hours when I put it on YouTube. It never fails. I'm like, I don't remember saying that. That's good. I need that. I take notes and I have one to say it. Because I don't remember saying half the stuff I say. Because I'm trying to allow the Holy Spirit to say what He wants. When I sit in church Sunday morning, I expect the pastor, listen to the Father to say what He needs me to hear. So something, some way, somehow, God is going to speak to me when I get over there. But am I expecting that? Yes, I am. Do most people expect that? Probably not. When you read your Bible, are you expecting the Father to speak to you? I hope so. But most people don't. Got to read my chapter because that will get me through the Bible in so many years. Got my chapter done. See you next week. See you tomorrow. They didn't read nothing. They might as well pick up a good book and read through it. I'd rather you read one word out of the Bible and God speak to you for whatever time you have than for you to read a whole chapter or a whole book of the Bible and get nothing. Because the Father wants to speak with you. He wants to fellowship with you. He's expecting to have that intimate time with you. Are we quietly waiting for it to happen? He's that faithful. He's waiting in the garden. He's waiting for us to prepare a garden for Him to come be with Him so He can walk and talk with us. But are we, are we preparing the garden? Scripture tells us this is the soil. We're the soil. Well, the word is the soil. We're supposed to plant the seeds of the word. 
So, last week and weeks before that, when I leave here, last, last week on the way home, I started thinking about faithfulness. Where do you want to go, Lord? What do you want to do? Got some ideas. Never thought of Lamentations till later in the week. I'm like, huh? What's that? Oh, that's a tough book. How am I get faithfulness out of that? Because we all can relate to pain. We all can relate to hurt. So that means we can relate to that circumstance that Jeremiah was going through. And that means we can relate to a loving God that got him through. Because that's faithfulness. God will get us through. Good is, It is good that one waits quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Remember, salvation is not just your ticket to get to heaven. Salvation is wholeness. So-so. Look the word up. It's to make you whole. Is there anything lacking? He will make it whole. Oh, I know we could go around the room and make a list of things that we're lacking. And he says... It is good that one waits quietly for the salvation of the Lord. We can make our own scrolls. Lord, I lack. Here's my list. Which one do you want to tackle first? 